OpenAI has just released two brand new models to its GPT family, and these are giving us groundbreaking new capabilities. The O1 model is the most powerful reasoning model yet, meaning that the model actively learns to refine its thinking process, experiment with different strategies, and improve using self-reflection. This is a fundamental breakthrough on the road to human-like intelligence. And this is what one of the developers who works on O1 has to say about it. We could look at how it was reasoning, and you could just see that it started to question itself and have really interesting reflection. And that was a moment for me where I was like, wow, like we've, we've uncovered something different. This is going to be something new. This is a significant advancement and represents a new level of AI capability. And because of this, they are not calling it a GPT-5. They say we are resetting the counter back to one and naming this series OpenAI 01. This is what the team behind the product has to say about this brand new release. We're starting a series of new models uh, with the new name O1. And this is to highlight the fact that you might feel different uh, when you use uh, O1 as a, compared to previous models uh, such as GPT-40. These new reasoning models could unlock breakthroughs in subjects as diverse as architecture, genetics, and engineering. One AI researcher has said, fundamentally, this is a new modality for models in order to be able to solve the really hard problems that it takes in order to progress towards human-like levels of intelligence. And in this video, we're going to break down exactly what these new models are capable of and how you can use them. We're also going to look at the limitations and issues of these new models. So let's dive in to the next frontier of AI together. We've developed a new series of AI models designed to spend more time thinking before they respond. They can reason through complex tasks and solve harder problems than previous models in science, coding, math, and much, much more. Now, you might see that this extra time to respond is a downside, but actually it's allowing the models to think for itself. So instead of relying on their pre-trained data, they are actually inferring the answers. Now, what's particularly interesting is that OpenAI has said, through training, they learn to refine their thinking process, try different strategies, and recognize their mistakes. Now, this is what one engineer at OpenAI says this means for the potential of creativity for users like you and me. The thing that's really, really exciting now is every human is, is gonna be able to build way more. Um, and there's so much more to build, and that's, that's, that's what gets me really excited. Now OpenAI has released a number of demonstrations of the prowess of this model, and we're going to take a look at some of the most impressive. Now, the first one is showcasing how the model can generate a simple game using code. So here is the prompt that he has inserted into GPT-01. This is what he says. Implement Snake with HTML, JS, and CSS. The entire code should be written in a single HTML block with embedded JS and CSS. Don't use any remote assets. After opening the HTML, user will need to hit space to start, restart the game. The snake will randomly go in one direction at the start and use WASD to control the direction of the snake. These are the keys on your keyboard, which roughly translate to up, left, down and right. Make it pretty and the playground large. Classic programmers design interpretation there. Make it pretty. Now we can see the demonstration showing the snake game being played. I particularly like that it also has included an instruction about how to actually play. So now we're seeing that it's possible to update and implement changes to the game design via the chat interface. So we can see here that after generating these updates, it also not only gives you the code to update the game, but also gives you an overview of the improvements that have been made. And now you can see the example has implemented these obstacles in Letters AI. But how does this compare with ChatGPT4? So I tried the exact same prompt and took the code and ran it myself. And this is the output from ChatGPT4 with the exact same prompt. And as you can see, it is a much inferior version of the game, and it does not even give you any food to eat. So let's have a go at this ourselves. I have access to GBT-01, and I've been playing around creating a few games myself. So the first one I created was a simple game of Pong, and to do this, all I did was went into ChatGPT, started a new conversation with the O1 preview model, and then I asked it to simply, uh, in JavaScript, write me the code for a simple version of Pong. I then took this code and pasted it into 
the JavaScript playground. I went to the index page and pasted all of the code in, and then it immediately runs in the window below. I then was able to open this in a preview window to see it here. And you can see that I'm getting absolutely smashed. Oh yes, I got it. And it works absolutely fine. What is particularly interesting with ChatGPT01 is that you get this new dropdown where you can see the chain of thought that the AI has gone through to create your response. Now, crucially, this is not the actual chain of thought prompting that is used in the AI. This is only a summary of what you get to see. Now, another one I created is this 2D platformer game. And as you can see here, I've got a little block jumping along <laughs> and it's able to move along and jump up and down and collect the points. However, it is not the most attractive design. And finally, I was able to create this shooter game where I'm able to shoot these blocks very easily. But this is a remarkably easy way to generate complex pieces of code with little actual code knowledge. And this is particularly interesting because recently Jensen Huang, who is the CEO of NVIDIA, said that in future it will not be necessary to teach children to code. Actually, what we need to be teaching them is the ability to master natural language. Uh, over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. And that the programming language, it's human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle. Now, ChatGPT Plus and team users will be able to access O1 models in ChatGPT straight away. Both O1 Preview and O1 Mini can be selected manually in the model picker. So these are available in the dropdown at the top of your window. And you can see here we have O1 Preview for advanced reasoning and O1 Mini, which is faster. So there are two models available. The first is O1 and the second is O1 Mini. And O1 Mini is a faster, cheaper reasoning model that is particularly effective at coding. As a smaller model, O1 Mini is 80% cheaper than O1 Preview. Let's have a look at another of the demonstrations the first example I have is very simple. This just counting the letter R's in a word strawberry. So let's start with the traditional, like existing model, GPT-40. So as you can see, the model uh, fails on this. There are three R's, but the model says there are only two R's. So here he has asked for the GPT to count the number of R's in the word strawberry. And you can see that GPT-40 has incorrectly answered this with two, when the answer should be three. So why does uh, this advanced model like GPT-40 makes such a simple mistake? That's because models like this uh, are built to process uh, the text, not with the uh, characters or words, it's somewhere between sometimes called a subword. So the, if we ask the question to uh, a model, a question that involves understanding the notion of characters and words, the model can really just make a mistakes because it's not really built for that. The reason why ChatGPT4 cannot do this is because the way it is interpreting words is that it's looking at parts of words. It's not looking at entire words or single characters. It's looking at something that is referred to as a subword. So now let's go on to our new model and type in the same problem. This is the O1 preview, which is a reasoning model. So unlike the GPT-40, it starts thinking about this problem before outputting the answer. And now it outputs the answer. There are three R's in the word strawberry. So that's the correct answer. So here we can see the new model is able to handle this. And that's because it spends a few moments to think about the answer and calculate it rather than to predict what is coming next. So I want to talk about a prompt that GPT-40 really struggles with, but our new model O1 Preview can do pretty well. And the prompt is simple. It's in this example, we see the prowess of the new model in its ability to handle complex writing puzzles. 
So what they do is they ask it to write a very specific poem uh, with a number of requirements, including in line two, the last word should end with I. In line three, the second word begins with U. In line five, the second to last word is eucalyptus. In the final line, each word has two syllables. And we'll see that the answer from GPT-40 meets some of the constraints, but not all of them. So the GPT-40 model manages to create some of these metrics, but fails to do so with the others. For example, it does not have two syllables in each word in the final line. Will. Will is only one syllable. The reason it's hard for GPT-40 is it has to get it correct on the first try. It can't check that it meets the constraints and then revise the poem. Now let's try the same poem with O1 Preview. And we'll see that differing from GPT-40, O1 Preview starts thinking before giving the final answer. And you can view a summary of the thinking process of the model. So first you could see it's starting to think about uh, different words for rhyming. Then you could see it wants to make sure the last word matches I. It thinks about words like alibi. Uh, it's analyzing word endings and it's thinking about uh, words like ski. Um, then it's piecing together phrases, uh, but it thinks they don't quite fit. It's thinking about phrases where the second word starts with you. Then it's tweaking the words to fit the two-syllable rule for line six. Um, it's digging into various two-syllable word combinations. Um, then it's checking whether the poem aligns with all the guidelines. Um, it's working through the poem to analyze the soccer aspect. And now let's look at the final poem. So here we can see the O1 preview and its ability to comprehend this complex prompt and then work through it step by step, constantly self-referencing the initial prompt to make sure that it is adhering to the constraints that have been asked for. And you can see this final output manages to fit the original prompt. So this is an example of a prompt where because the model can uh, generate um, uh, candidates and re do reasoning before giving the final answer, it's able to give a higher quality response. So you can see that because the model is able to generate multiple candidates or answers in its thought process and then evaluate it as it goes, it's able to generate a more accurate response. So how has OpenAI managed to develop this brand new breakthrough? Well, it says that it, it is attaining these excellent results through a method of improved chain of thought prompting and reinforcement learning. So this means that it's able to put together a whole host of different actions in one go, as well as using self-referential learning to improve its results. Now, it's very interesting that it takes a few seconds for O1 to think. And Noam, Noam Brown, who is a, now Noam Brown, who is an AI researcher, has some interesting insights into the future of AIs. He says that OpenAI's O1 thinks for seconds, but we aim for future versions to think for hours, days, or even weeks. Inference costs will be higher, but what cost would you pay for a new cancer drug, for breakthrough batteries, for a proof of the Riemann hypothesis? AI can be more than chatbots. Here he is speculating that the future of AI is to do with allowing the AIs to think for extended periods on their own. And with this, it's possible to come up with brand new inventions, ideas, or solutions to some of the most important problems facing humanity. Now, if you're wondering, the Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture to do with math and to do with zeros. And many consider it to be the most important unsolved problem in pure mathematics. So who is this new model for? Well, OpenAI has said that this demonstrates a huge breakthrough for science, coding, and math. Now, if we look at the improvements from GPT-01 on some metrics, we can see in this graph, which plots the rate of GPT-40 on a number of different skill sets against O1. And you can see that it has improved across the board with most noticeable improvements in college mathematics and formal logic. And you can see that its application in mathematics has vastly improved. Now there are some limitations to the O1 models. And firstly, at launch, weekly rate limits will be 30 messages for the O1 preview and 50 for the O1 mini. And that is 
weekly, not daily. So you will only get 30 and 50 messages per week at the moment, which is a very small amount. So make sure you use them wisely. Now, the next limitation to consider is the cost. In the API, the O1 preview is $15 per 1 million input tokens and $60 per 1 million output tokens. That's 3x the cost versus GPT-40 for input and 4x the cost for output. So that's three to four times more expensive. Now, the other limitation is as an early model, it doesn't yet have many of the features that make ChatGPT useful, like browsing the web for information and uploading files and images. But OpenAI has given us a taster of what they're going to be working on next. This is an early preview of these reasoning models in ChatGPT and the API. In addition to model updates, we expect to add browsing, file and image uploading, and other features to make them more useful to everyone. Now, the key development in this model is that fundamentally, this is a new modality for models in order to be able to solve the really hard problems that it takes in order to progress towards human-like levels of intelligence. And this could pave the way for major developments in diverse fields from engineering to medicine. And we are moving fast in the development of AI. What do you think of the new model? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about the capabilities of AI video creation, check out my course in the description below. Now, I've been reading the new book by Noah Yuval Harare called Nexus, and it poses a very interesting argument on the importance of information networks to the development of human civilization. And it alludes to the problems that we may face with AI. And so I will leave you with a quote from this book that I appreciated. And that is, why are we so good at accumulating more information and power, but far less successful at acquiring wisdom? And I wonder what the applications might well be of these new models and what might be the dangers. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here. And most of all, I wish you a delightful day.